having access so. to Tanis's well-characterized patients that, that actually come to autopsy through the generous donation of the, of the patient and the, and the next of kin, um, it, it has allowed us to actually understand better the pathology of uh, Lewy body dementia and comparing it to Alzheimer's disease and, and finding similarities and differences. The, the, it's an intriguing problem because uh, Lewy body dementia patients actually have a number of features that are shared with Alzheimer's mm -hmm. disease and also shared with Parkinson's disease, but they're in fact different from both Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease and, and define a unique clinical pathologic syndrome. Um, the focus of the, the, the pathologic research is to identify ways to detect those um, characteristic changes in the brain in the living patient. Um, there's been great progress in terms of developing biomarkers for both Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. There's been less um, progress in terms of Lewy body dementia, and it, it's, a, it's an unmet need because we certainly need um, to be able to diagnose Lewy body dementia in life um, through better and more specific uh, biomarker tests because it has clinical impl implications. And maybe you could tell us, Tanis, what are the implications? Why do you need to make this diagnosis? Wh why is it important to know that it's Lewy body dementia and not Alzheimer's disease? Are there any, is it just purely an academic question or does it actually have some, some bearing on, on patient outcomes? Well, one of the most important reasons, of course, why our patients come to see us is because they want to know what they can do about the symptoms. And they want some relief. And of course, every physician wants to help their patients. And we want to help our patients. And um, there are some medicines that are seem to be more helpful uh, than others in Lewy body patients. And I will just uh, go on to explain that in Lewy, I might be treading a little bit on your territory here, but in Lewy body dementia, there is a fairly severe cholinergic depletion, uh, which means that there is an area of the brain that is quite severely affected. And one of the brain transmitters or one of the chemicals is called acetylcholine. It's very, very low. And one of the medicines that we routinely will give our uh, dementia patients is what are called, they're called cholinesterase inhibitors. They boost up the acetylcholine. And in our Lewy body patients, they really seem to benefit from that quite a bit. So we have learned that very early on in Lewy body dementia, there seems to be the severe depletion in this particular brain chemical. And adding these medications that boost this chemical does seem to help. So one way that understanding the very earliest stage of the disease can be helpful is, of course, being able to know what treatment might be worthwhile to consider early on. But you also mentioned that they have patients with Lewy body dementia have visual hallucinations. And clinicians that encounter a patient with vi visual hallucinations, especially if they're troubling, may put them on medications such as antipsychotic medications. And what kind of implication does that have uh, with respect to the diagnosis of Lewy body dementia? It, it depends on the medication. And um, there are some antipsychotic medications that may worsen Parkinsonism. There's a, a set of medications that have known properties that have a tendency to um, worsen Parkinsonism. And in an individual who is susceptible to Parkinsonism, or who already has a little bit of Parkinsonism, they may be more inclined to have a side effect of worsening Parkinsonism. So that, by that you also include uh, Lewy body dementia, so that they may have an adverse effects from these medications. Correct, correct. And they call that neuroleptic sensitivity. And in fact, in it's one of the things that uh, physicians are more aware of these days. It's been included in the Lewy body con uh, consensus criteria to be uh, uh, for the physicians to be aware of is if neuroleptic sensitivity is present to be concerned about the possibility of Lewy body dementia, particularly in the context of visual hallucinations or Wha dementia. What about the, 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 in terms of being able to predict the, the, the course of the disease? Uh, if you, if an Alzheimer, if you give a diagnosis of Alzheimer's versus a diagnosis of Lewy body dementia, 
what significance is it have in terms of the, the, the eventual outcome on uh, the disease course? Well, in our studies to date, um, we have found that Lewy body dementia does have a shorter duration of illness than Alzheimer's disease. And, you know, in our, the prior studies that have been reported in the literature, sometimes that was attributed to medications being given that were perhaps considered inappropriate or uh, inadvertently inappropriate, you know, not knowing that this was a medication that might cause uh, adverse events or side effects. Um, in our uh, group, we know that that's not been the case because we carefully have monitored which medications our patients have been given. Um, so it seems that there seems there is a shorter duration of illness in Lewy body than in Alzheimer's disease. And what about the difference between susceptibility to these diseases with respect to male female? It's an excellent point. The uh, patients who have Lewy body dementia are very similar to the patients with Parkinson's disease in that there seems to be a uh, greater ratio of males to females who have Lewy body dementia or Lewy body disease. And in Alzheimer's disease, the opposite is true. It seems to be more females who tend to get Alzheimer's disease than males. 